Total team effort win for the Jays. They get the mini sweep over the Phils, win 8-2 tonight. That's one story. Of course, mm -hmm. the other, Charlie Montoyo fired around midday. John Schneider uh, bumped up from bench manager to interim manager. And you could just tell all throughout this game the vibe. He knows these guys. Yeah. He has history with a lot of these guys. But he was loose. He was well, calm. He was dancing. It was a little different, too, because uh, Joe Settle pointed out the hit and run. And you really got to tip the cap to Ross Stripling. He's been sure. so good for the Blue Jays. Absolutely. Seven innings, no one runs. Started in the bullpen. Yeah. And he called in. He's been great. But, yeah. yeah, John Schneider gets his first win as a major league manager. <sighs> How do I smell? Beer? <laughs> a little bit of everything. <laughs> Powder, beer, shaving cream. All right, go ahead and raise your hands, um, and Andrea will get you the mic. Hey, John, it looks like you uh, just celebrated your, your first <laughs> win. What's this uh, these last few hours been like for you personally? Crazy, you know, bittersweet, like I said before. Um, didn't expect this sitting right here at 11 o'clock this morning, but um, felt really good. It was a awesome game, obviously, but for me personally, this is uh, as bad as cool as it gets. So, like I said, um, love Charlie, and it was a hard day for everyone, uh, but happy that we played the way we did. And for a lot of these players, or most of them, it's the first managerial change. It's a unique day for them. How do you think they responded and showed up there? I mean, good, I think, you know, eight to two. Um, Tremendous pitching performance by Strip, Timmy, and, and Trev. Um, so couldn't ask for more, uh, obviously, with the offense and Teo uh, doing their thing as well. So um, like I said, it's a talented group. You don't really have to say much. They're pretty self-motivated. So it was, uh, it was a cool night for sure. John, just from a maybe a preseason expectation, this is a, a game that you figured might be a bit more prototypical with a, a good starting pitching, some early offense, and some add-on runs. Uh, for you, is this the formula that you kind of see f this team with the potential to, have, to produce on a more consistent basis? Yeah, I think so. And that's a really good pitcher in Zach Wheeler over there, um, especially his last two outings. So I think what they did is um, what we hope for them to do most nights. You know, it's. Um, it's a tough lineup to, for anyone to go through. Um, a lot of right-handers, obviously, but a lot of really good right-handers. And, um, you know, the guy showed up offensively and really can't say enough about Strip. You know, just kind of, he's been a stabilizing force since Ryu's been out, and he was, um, he was dialed in from the start, man. Him and Kirky had a great mix, and you get that, it, uh, it makes days like today pretty easy. And it looked like you hit and run a couple times there. Were you, were you looking for opportunities to be a bit more active on the base paths? Yeah, the one with Espy and Chappie at first was a hit and run early. Uh, the other one with Espy hitting behind Gurry, just Gurry going on his own and, and picking up some tendencies. But I think against a pitcher like that of that caliber, you have to take advantage of spots. Uh, you can't kind of wait around and wait for something to happen. You've got to force the issue at times. Espy, obviously, I know him well, and I know how he can handle the bat, so it was a good opportunity for that uh, to kind of get that first run across. And I thought it made them a little bit more aware of us on the bases, honestly, going forward um, with the way they were holding runners. So definitely something we want to do going forward is, is kind of forcing the issue at times and, and being aggressive on the bases. I know you're still trying to process tonight, but uh, <laughs> is Gosman ready to go tomorrow? Yeah, Gosman's going to start tomorrow versus KC. We didn't want to do it on his bobblehead night. <laughs> his daughter thought on the first pitch. It looked like Vladdy didn't know how he hit that ball out. Do you have any idea how he did it? Uh, no, Vladdy being Vladdy kind of one-handed and got it out to left center. But um, that's how talented he is. You know, he can kind of change the course of a game with one swing at any time. And uh, he can do it with one hand. It's pretty impressive. So we need, we need him. We need Teo. We need Kirky, all those guys in the middle. And uh, they showed up tonight. Hey, John, obviously you've had like kind of the two opportunities last year to, to act as manager. How did this one kind of feel different during the game to you? Um, different because I knew I was doing it again tomorrow. <laughs> so um, and different because it was, you know, just not acting for a day. It's acting for the rest of the season, which is cool. Um, so, yeah, you know, you don't want to just put everything into one night. Not that I was doing that last year, but um, it's just kind of a, a cool stepping stone for me, and it was obviously a great series for the guys. So um, just a pretty cool night. 
and then strip for a while, as you mentioned, has been really good two yeah. times through the order. What did you kind of see from him to kind of allow him to go back out for that third time? Watching him, his velo, the stuff, the way he was playing, their, their lineup's tricky because there's so many lefties, righties, and they're trying to match up and who to bring in where and line guys up in the right spot. But, I mean, he was awesome. I mean, he was just cruising, whatever it was, 54 pitches through four, uh, five innings, whatever it was. Um, so it kind of made it easy for me and Pete to sit there and talk about it. So when you're trying to navigate around some potential um, damaging spots, he kind of stayed out of them. So it made it pretty easy. Uh, he was still kind of our best option at that point going deep and um, really just can't say enough about how he changed speeds, located, I mean, just pinpoint location with everything and executed the plan um, basically to perfection. He was awesome. John, I know you've had a, a, not a lot going on today, but I, I presume you've seen uh, looking ahead to tomorrow that you will face a weakened Royals lineup. What reaction do you have to, to seeing that number of, of players who will not be in the lineup against your team this weekend? Uh, a little bit surprising, but I think, um, you know, the rules are the rules, and we live by them, and the rest of the league lives by them. Um, definitely not a series you're going to take lightly going into the break. So you kind of see who they have, you game plan accordingly, and uh, hopefully build off this two-game series against the Phils, who are a damn good team, especially recently, and, uh, you know, just keep on keeping on, you know, so uh, looking forward to it for sure. John, um, Mesa tonight and last night, um, two really good ones in a row, three and four, really good ones. How important is he going to be for you guys down the stretch? Very. I mean, if we can get Timmy to do that with the way his stuff plays against lefties and really against righties, he's almost matchup proof because of that sinker. So he's going to be a stabilizing force in the pen going forward. Um, it's great to have a guy that's left-handed to go in against lineups like that um, in certain pockets where you can kind of really put him in a good spot. But if he can do that, um, you know, Jimmy throwing the way he is and Jordy at the end with Simber on the other side, right-handed too, it's just huge for us. So, um, and not to discredit Trevor, I mean, his last couple outings since he's been back and tonight was probably the exclamation point on it. Uh, he's been nailed. So, but Timmy's just, he's been a constant and he's going to be really important the rest of the way. Since you brought up Trevor, what's been the difference between uh, I don't think he's been scored on. I'm not sure he's given up a hit since he came back. But what's the difference between what he did last year and what he did before he went on the IL this year? I think right now, since he's been back, it's execution. It's locating his pitches, um, not trying to be too fine because his stuff plays. And um, when he can get you know ahead in counts, um, he's usually pretty good. And I think he was kind of battling a little bit, being too fine with location uh, early on in the year and put himself in some tough counts. But if he can do that, um, man, is that going to be a boost for us? Because we've seen him be really good before, and obviously he's got a ton of talent. Um, and he's almost kind of matchup proof too with that changeup against lefty. So it's it's kind of a luxury to have that guy that can handle both sides, righty and lefty. But he's been awesome, and I think it's just a credit to you know Pete and Bushy that talked to him and said, hey, get in the zone and let your stuff do what do what it does. He's been great. All right, thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow. There you go, the double thumbs up. You like the way uh, John Schneider came out, kind of Bruce Bochy-esque for you? Uh, yeah, well, anytime you mention beer, I think our automatic reaction is beer, beer Bruce, Bruce Bochy. Exactly. Yeah, sure he wasn't got... smoking darts like uh, Douse, Jimmy Leland yeah. or anything. But... That was with some soda pops, beer when he went in the, in the clubhouse. He's shaving uh, cream, all that, yeah. Yeah, uh, we did notice some different things tonight. Siddle mentioned the hit and run, and Schneider talked about it, the hit and run with Espinal. And for an old-school National League fan like myself, yes. Force the issue at times and be aggressive on the basis. So that that might be a little different than what we saw under Charlie Montoya, perhaps. Yeah, and the other tidbit he gave that Kevin Gosman will be yeah. starting tomorrow night against uh, the KC Royals. Of course, there was the comebacker he had took off the ankle just over a week ago, but that is definitely positive news that Gosman will be back on the bump tomorrow. Okay, speaking of being on the bump tonight, Ross Stripling, Strips, as uh, Schneider called him, had a great outing, 81 pitches, That's no smooth. earned runs. That's easy, isn't it? Isn't it supposed to? It's not supposed to be easy, but he looked pretty, looked pretty solid. Yeah, it looked that way. There you go. I feel like today was a good combo of a really good plan. You know, I get together with Pete Walker and Kirk before the game, and we went through each hitter, something that I normally do, but had a really good plan against each guy and went out and executed. And um, you know, was able to get ahead, get strike two a lot, or even get um, you know a lot of early outs there and, and balls in play, and able to stay efficient and get us back in the dugout and then uh, put up some runs against a really good pitcher and Wheeler and, and get a win on, you know, it's been kind of a crazy day. Speaking of a crazy day, I know you were 
focus on getting ready for the game? Or what did the news, how did you react to today's news? Um, yeah, good question. I saw it on Twitter before anything, and you know, then you kind of start texting other guys, being like, is this real? Obviously, you assume it's real. It's coming from Ken Rosenthal. And then, you know, we had a meeting at 2 o'clock where uh, Ross Atkins addressed all of us. And, you know, I think, uh, kind of a weird thing to answer, isn't it? But I, th I think that, you know, as players, we realize if we would have played better, better, that Charlie would have kept his job, right? I think that's one thing that we all understand in the locker room. Um, you know, I, I don't think any of us would have any bad thing to ever say about Charlie, ever. I don't think anyone would ever think that he doesn't want us to have success individually or as a team. It's a whole Blue Jays organization. Uh, he had our backs all the time and wanted us to win baseball games. And it's a shame, um, you know, it's been there since 2019 when this kind of young core got going, that he's not going to be there uh, to see a lot of their success and where they go and where we go as a team. But I think everyone, you know, would say thank you to him and the effort that he gave us for the years that he did and, and that we love him and wish him well. Um, you know, I, I, I've never been a part of a managerial change in the middle of the season. It's the third one of the year across baseball, so I think it just goes to show when you have a team that's uh, expecting big things and to win playoff games and uh, things don't go well, that, you know, change might come, and that's what happened today. How different is the style of John Schneider? Well, uh, it is different, right? At, at Schneider's probably more of a bubbly, outgoing kind of guy than Charlie. Um, you know, Charlie is... is um, you know, kind of quiet and more laid back, and and will probably address something one on one or or you know whatever. And Schneider's definitely more of a bu you know big personality. I think you saw got done pitching. I watched come in here and I watched, and they do like a dance with Romano before the game that I've never even seen before. I didn't even know he did that. That's like kind of Schneider in a nutshell. He's just you know full energy, smile on his face all the time. Um, you know, a guy that a lot of us, not myself, but our young guys have played for since low A, high A, whatever it is, won some championships in the minor leagues. They know him really well. So. Um, you know, he's, he's definitely an energetic guy that look forward to having a dugout every day. How do you come out of that meeting at 2 o'clock and get back to the locked in that you need to be on the start of um, Yeah, good question. Um, you know, I would just say you kind of compartmentalize it, I guess. You, you understand that it's a crazy day, and, and this, this doesn't happen very often. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm a professional. i got a job to do, so you, you know, go about your kind of normal pitch day routine. An hour later, I had a meeting with Pete and Kirk, and, and then I start my stuff leading up to, you know, first pitch, and you just kind of start getting ready that way. You know, I didn't really have much time to sit around the locker room and think about it, you know, basically already get going and, and start worrying about the Phillies. So, um, you know, kind of glad I was in my own little bubble maybe for that, um, where I was kind of separated from the majority of it, but, uh, you know, still definitely thinking about it, aware of it, and, you know, you feel it in the dugout and the locker room and everything that happened today. Does it feel like bigger starter, a bigger game when you're out there considering kind of what happened today? Um, yeah, a little bit, right? Like you want to get the uh, John Schneider dynasty off to a good start, right? Um, you know, I th and, and Wheeler on the mound, he's been really pitching well as of late. I think he had like a 17-inning scoreless streak coming into the game. So you're aware of stuff like that for sure, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm basically as hyper motivated to put up a zero as you ever, I mean, it's the big leagues, right? So you don't want to put more pressure on yourself than you already have. So I think, you know, you try and take a deep breath and go out there and just get the team off to a good start there in the top of the first. I was able to do that and then you just go to work. We've talked a few times about kind of going through twice through the order and having success. How did it feel to get back out there for the third time? Yeah, it felt really good, especially, um, you know, the Mariners grinded me hard a couple of days ago through like 94 pitches and in five innings, you know, so that was a much tougher grind. felt like I'd base runners on every inning. Today was better execution and, and um, you know, once you kind of get the ball rolling, get some confidence, conviction comes and, you know, start having more success. So able to just be more efficient today. I feel like I executed better today, which, you know, usually leads to more success. And, um, you know, able to get that seventh up, which I haven't done since last year, Rich told me, wherever Rich is. And, um, you know, felt good. Could have gone back out there at the eighth. I don't really know how hard they contemplated it, but ended up pulling me there in the seventh. And uh, hopefully next time, or soon can work my way into the eight.